quick lap guide of snow. I'm going to do this in sections and laps. On the first lap I'm going to go through and point out how I take this course and how I take the corners, what angles I'm looking for. I, I might forget what gears I'm in so I'll try and keep that. Obviously each car is different. The other thing you want to look for on lap two, I'm going to be talking about uh, where to pass, where the passing opportunities are. One of the things that's interesting about this track is that it's actually pretty easy to get go for an overtake but it's hard to complete it you could end up side by side for two to three corners trying to complete a move now this is a track that can induce a lot of mistakes so it might be safer to wait for a person to make a mistake to get by but if you go for a pass you might be in for two three even four turns just trying to get by them and uh the good thing is the track allows for that it's got the width for it uh, the bad part is, is because of how flowing this track is, is when you're in that situation, both of you are going to be a ton of time. So it's a strategic thing, whether or not you wait for a mistake to get by, or if you try to go for the passing drone. So let's go through this. I or I am starting actually at turn 12. Uh, the, the track maps I looked at actually, there's no names to the corners and the not really chicanes, but the, the sweepy left and rights are actually considered one corner. So as we're accelerating through on our lap, that's the turn 12. We're coming up the straight, and you're going to be going full throttle the whole way. Now, if you get turn one, this is turn one up the hill. If you stay a little wide, kind of keeping it semi straight, you're looking for that yellow track guide is but you can look for the the tire barrier as well you're going to start turning in you get this right turning in hard enough pretty much stay flat i think i'm in fit here you might need to downshift if you're losing scrubbing speed as i come up the hill i stay pretty much on this left uh, curbing right here i break right at the end of it now you can actually drift out into the center of the track, like if you watched the, the full speed uh, lap I did. And it's just about as fast. The advantage of being out here is that you're breaking in towards the corner. You can start getting on the gas sooner. So it, it's slower through the corner, but your exit speed is much faster. Now what I'm looking for here, right on the inside of this curbing, is where I want to be aiming get too much up on the elevation of that curbing it will upset your car want to be a little safer stay on the left here but the quickest way i found right here touching the curbing as you're exiting now if you did the farther out sideline you're already on the gas you're shifting you're going to drift all the way out if you got enough speed it's going to carry you all the way out to the curbing here on the left feel free to use that as you straighten the car out uh, the car is going to become a little light. It's going to be hard to get on the gas, so you might be modulating the throttle until you can get full throttle down. Coming here straight, now we're coming up to turn three. Now, both these corners are considered turn three, three eight, uh, turn three and alpha. 
I use this right hand curbing all the way to really give me a wide line entering this corner. Now I know a lot of people break into this. I do not, but I actually do. I literally just lift off the gas and let the hill itself slow the car down. Now this left curbing is dangerous. Get on it too much, it's gonna upset your car, which is coming up kind of over this little crest here is a problem because if your car is upset, you're not gonna be able to turn. So at this point I've lifted and now I'm modulating the throttle. You know, half throttle, quarter throttle, trying to stabilize the car, trying to stay off that curbing. Because what I'm looking for here is the curbing on the right. Because as I'm turning the car in this way, still modulating the throttle to get, I'm actually going to kind of come up off this curbing. The car is going to be at a slip angle and kind of sliding a little bit. You want to get it turned in, kind of come up off this curbing as you're going over the hill. Now you can cheat like I do here and use the uh, track marker guide, the blue one to aim for, or just memorize where you need to kind of be go over this crest because as you're starting to come over this crest, you're getting more and more throttle and you're going to be a little unstable because the car is going to be sliding way out here. You want it to come out here. You're going to come out to this left-hand curbing and I use absolutely as much of it as possible because I'm accelerating full throttle at this point and my braking marker right at the end of this. The reason I'm using the curbing to widen the car out is because as I start braking, I'm actually turning the car in pretty darn early. So much so that I'm shifting between braking in the car. There's a little bump. Where this line is here, there's a little bump. And if you keep tight to where this curbing is, you're going to hit it a little earlier. Now, if you brake late and end up trying to kind of flip the car, kind of like here, if I can, like this, this bump is going to really upset the car and make it hard to get on the throttle. Whereas as we're starting to get on the throttle here, we're looking just for the inside of this without getting up on the curb, but on the very edge of it, at this point I'm really starting to get the throttle more and more down as I aim for the very outside of corner four. So you can see the track marker guide. I'm going to come all the way out here as I'm getting on the gas. By this point I'm in probably second gear. Uh, you might want to use a higher gear for more traction, especially going over that bump, because at this point, you want to be in that gear fully accelerating. And if you're having to shift coming out of this corner, it's actually going to slow you down all the way, because we're going to be running flat out through uh, turn five. But I actually come out here over the curbing and use the dirt, using the full width of the track limits, and I'm at full throttle at this point. And if I stayed in second gear on this car, I might be third. Just want to get to the full throttle gear. And as we go through turn five, we're full throttle the whole way, hugging the right hand of the corner. Now in GT3 cars, you can have no issue It's full throttle, but you want to set yourself up. These cars have enough downforce that you're going to be able to go over this crest pretty stably. So what I'm looking for is I come over this crest full throttle. In this car, I believe I'm in uh, fourth gear, no, third gear, wanting to shift the fourth. As I come over the crest on the outside and I aim for this apex, it's a double apex, and I really don't even start braking until I'm all the way to this point. At this point, right as you saw the, the fence back here, here I'll back up real quickly. It's after that turn in the fence as that goes up the hill is the point I really start braking and almost every car can't take this corner smooth it's going to be a little unstable and that's kind of a good thing because we're going to hit the brakes pretty hard try and slide this rear end out I cause the car to drift out a little bit that's okay come in too wide you're actually going to have to bleed off more speed at this point I'll probably drop into second gear on this car aiming for here and I'm back on the throttle fighting to get fully on the throttle I'll use a little bit of throttle steer to slide the car end out and keep it tight to this corner and I think in the lap I didn't actually quite stay tight you don't have to stay perfect but 
the idea is to be on full throttle as you're coming out this corner. And if you get this right, shifting up to the next gear, and it's going to drift you all the way out here because you're straightening the car out without trying to give it too much turn angle. You may even clip this curving a bit so that you're straight heading down this straightaway. That's that's turn six. The turn six. Yes, that's turn six. So on the straight, obviously full throttle. Coming down the straight, what am I looking for? 100 meter board, I'm looking at the 100 meter board. Just after halfway, about, probably about 60% between 100 meter board and 50 board, so 70 meters when I start getting on the brakes. And I get on the brakes pretty hard because this is the double apex corner. You're going to want to have most of your braking done, even as you're turning in. You usually have, quick, kind of a quick trail brake to aim the corner in. Now, if you notice on my fast lap, I actually hit this curve. I actually don't recommend that because it can really throw off your corner. But at this point, we want to hit, hit a steady turn angle and acceleration. Uh, I'll be in second gear in this car. I know I've got this corner so mostly right if I manage to maintain the proper turning angle most of the way through the corner. I have to straighten up, it means I didn't get it right. Because we're going to be on the throttle but maintaining a steady speed. It's going to carry us all the way out here to the left edge. I'm looking at this curving right here. don't want to hit it. I want to stay steady. There's a bump right here that unsettles your car and you're starting to put more and more throttle on it. So I'm wanting to get past this bump. And as I do, the car is straightening out. I'm aiming towards the curbing right in front of me. I'm on. I'm at full throttle at this point. Full throttle, third gear. I'm going to straighten this out, the S's out, as much as I possibly can. That's turn seven. I believe, if I look at this, yeah, this is all considered turn eight. I'm straightening them out. I'm going to bust over this curb. This curbing does upset the car. Some more than others but going from full throttle whichever gear you're in you'll pretty much stay in but I'm lifting at this point and we're going to use the full width of the track and then some because we are going to straighten out through this curbing lifting off the throttle use every inch of it and put a couple wheels in the dirt because at this point as you get over that curbing I'm wanting to I turned the car, but also slide it a bit to rotate. Bit of a slip angle. We're not looking to actually drift the car. Bit of a slip angle. Turn into car as I'm getting back on the throttle. After I get the car rotated, so that I can literally be at full throttle by this point. Accelerating towards the outside. Again, I'm cheating with the track marker, but if you get this right, you're going to carry yourself all the way out to this curbing full throttle and you're never going to lift and after you come off that curbing you're going to drift out towards the middle of the track you don't have to go all the way out towards the outside just the middle so you can maintain your acceleration you're at full speed as you're heading towards the next corner now this game taking this corner the fastest again we're going to use all the track and then some because we're aiming almost towards those orange markers just to the right of them because we're going to come over this curbing straight line all the way out two wheels in the dirt and this is a lift turn a brake turn get this right might have to downshift it depends on which car you're in but you lift and aim for the curbing aim for the curbing the car is going to be drifting out on you get this right going to be back on the throttle already and you're just going to clip inside of the curbing go up on the curbing it's going to upset your car and throw it wide that's bad you're going to get a track panel uh, for going wide here and this is really kind of difficult but if you get it right your full throttle all the way to the exit i believe this is nine and nine alpha no it's ten turn ten turn ten and you're literally going to drive all the way out on this curve Trying, you've slid out on this curb and just trying to get back on. As long as you keep two wheels on the curb, I found it doesn't give me a penalty. As we're going towards turn 11, 
We're already, we stayed at full throttle. I mean, if you get that right, you're going to hit that curbing at about 120, to 123 miles an hour, accelerating down the straight. You're going to stay as close to the wall as possible, because after that little brick in the wall passes, you're actually going to drift out here to the left, coming into 11. What I'm looking for, usually there's a couple orange markers here on the outside, about three of them. Put the first one or two, that's fine. But I'm all the way out here, starting to aim. As I hit the first of those orange markers, I'm braking. I'm braking at an angle, so I'm straight lining right towards right towards this uh, yellow line with the curbing. Braking, 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 lifting a little bit to let the car rotate. And at this point, most of your braking should be done. Now, almost no car takes this in, in first gear. Uh, the Acura is a bit of an exception. It's got really long first gear. But at this point, I'm already on the gas. I'm touching the gas. And just like turn seven uh, the other on the other side of the track, this is kind of a steady angle, uh, steady steering to angle track where you, a corner where you want to keep steering angle your speed steady as you're starting to come out of the corner using that yellow line right in the middle of the car you're starting to push more and more gas the cars the, the back end of the car is going to want to drift out on you so you're going to modulate your gas to get just to the right point that you're starting to get on at full throttle as you're coming out of the corner it's going to drift you all the way over to the pit wall over here at the pit wall just you're straightening out and at full throttle. And again, corner 12 is not even really a corner. You can just stay to the inside, go straight through this as fast at full throttle the whole way, all the way to the finish line. Uh, my best lap I actually just did in practice race with Starkey was a, in this car in a 128.671. I did a 72.72. I do believe if you watch that lap, there's easily another three, four tenths that this car could get into the low mid, mid low uh, one to eight. And of course, if it's Toby, he might get high. But that's all right. So at this point, that's how you take this track. I hope that helps you. Here, though, with the coming race this weekend, I'm actually going to talk about passing opportunities. So. Going into turn one, this is actually a pretty good passing opportunity. Uh, the tricky part about it is, is where are you at? Are you on the outside or the inside? Now, generally people will defend the inside, but if you can get up along somebody on the outside, it's probably the best place to be because if they're going inside, they're going to actually have to drop speed, lift off the throttle, whereas you can stay full throttle on the outside of them good place to go for a pass uh, and you can make a stick because you can block off the person on the inside of turn one because you'll be on the inside of turn two because they, they're going to have to lift off the throttle coming up this hill and you won't you should be able to stay right beside them so you can trust them a little bit but if you're trying to go for the move here come up the center of the track Break at basically the same point. It's a slower way through the corner because you're braking harder, or not harder, you're braking longer to get the car rotated. But since they're on the outside, they really don't have much of a choice. They're either going to have to slot in behind you or they're going to try and hold the outside line and be difficult. If they can do it, though, it, it might work for staying with you, but they won't be able to get you from here. So that's one good place to pass in this track. Uh, heading out of turn two towards turn three and three alpha, not a good place to pass. This is already a dangerous corner as it is. Uh, I know a lot of people go for move. It's a good place to take advantage of people's mistakes. However, if you go side by side through this, uh, somebody's probably gonna pay the price. Do that, they're gonna have to back out after they first part of turn and then alpha. I wouldn't recommend it uh, unless you know you're just that much faster than the guy and have the move completed by the time. At that point, 
he has nowhere to go really to get get next to you coming out into three alpha. Ideally, if you're wanting to pass him, we'll tuck in right behind him, hold in behind him. Turn four is a good place to go for a pass. Remember on my lap guide, I showed you it's coming way out here. However, if you're going for the pass, you can maintain the inside corner and make them go on the outside. Remember what I said about that bump? You're going to break harder, and they're going to be out up front a little ahead of you, but you're actually going to have the safer <coughs> route over the bump. Whereas they're, as they go over the bump, it's going to want to throw them so far out wide that they're going to have to bleed off speed just to not go wide of this corner. You can kind of maintain. Now, if they get it right, it's harder, but if they get it right, they can stay next to you. At that point, it's just going to be a drag race all the way to the crest of the hill, and chances are you're going to be side by side the whole way if they maintain it. But if they don't maintain good chance that you're going to win the drag race coming out of the corner heading towards the hill. But not much to stay here if you're side by side and on the inside. It's to your advantage if you're if you're going to win the drag race. Now, if you're not going to win the drag race, it's a kind of a bad place to be. That's what kind of makes passing so difficult here is because one good point to get you slightly ahead puts you in a bad place for the. So if they're on the inside or you're on the inside coming up over this crest, they can keep it tight to the corner. You're going to have to maintain the outside line. Chances are this is kind of dangerous because they're going to want to end up drifting out. If they get it wrong, they're going to hit you. You're on the outside. If you're on the inside, you need to maintain your lane right next to the L line because you're going to be drifting out. They can maintain the lane. They're going to be kind of getting out ahead of you, ahead of you as you go through this corner. Even though you're going to have slightly more exit speed, you're probably going to slot in behind them. Best chance here if you end up in a situation is kind of crossover. Because as they kind of drift out in front of you, they're gonna go wide, you're gonna go straight, you can kind of gain their draft a little bit and up the inside side of them and down straight. And that's not necessarily a bad place going into turn seven. As I'm about to show you, the faster line is actually the faster faster line through this corner. So if you're side by side going into the end, now natural tendency is to defend on the inside. But my experience has been, if I defend the inside, then I and I do what I'm supposed to do, maintaining the inside line of the corner. I bleed way too much speed that blues out on the exit. Whereas on the outside, you can break just slightly later. You maintain kind of steady speed, a little slower than if you were using the full double apex of the corner, but you're still double apexing just in the center of the map. So as that person is on the inside and you're outside and they, they are required to give you space, it can be dangerous though, because if they bump you, they can bump you outside the track and get a penalty. But if we're doing what we're supposed to, you're going to maintain a steady speed. You're going to be able to stay pretty much right beside them because they're going to have to slow up. They might not be able to because they're going so slow, they're actually going to do kind of a double apex where they're not maintaining a steady cornering, where they're actually going to be letting off, straightening up, and coming in. You're going to have a massive speed advantage coming out of the exit of this corner to be able to pull away from them. Heading down this straight. Now, I see lots of people go side by side through here. Really dangerous, because remember I said you straight line this? If you're turning left and right, then left constantly, it really slows you down. Going side by side, it's not a good place to go for a move. Really not. However, if you are side by side and you can force them into a mistake, take advantage of them. If you're behind them and they're pressing, this is a very good chance, especially if they don't get all the way over the curbing. Let's say they stay out here and you're right behind them, they're gonna lose a ton of speed. You can take that outside line. If they get ready to turn in, cross over. If they're trying to get in the speed, they're gonna be running very wide. As you come out of here, a gap should open and take the inside line past them. Again, not the ideal place to go for any moves. 
you're gonna really you want to force them into a mistake because you're both just gonna lose a ton of time but if you get the run on them out of here they're gonna be slow and even if you can't get in front of them let's say you're you're out here on the outside you're gonna have more speed you're gonna have the better angle going through turn two they're both accelerating so even if they're using all the track width, you're in their way if you're next to them. If you can get beside somebody coming into turn 10, they're going to lose a lot of speed. If they're smart, they're actually going to kind of let you get in front of them, take your turn so that they can take this take this turn at full speed. If I was following you, that's kind of what I'd do. I'd let you get in front of me at the last moment, but make it so that you're farther to the inside. Because if you're side by side, they're going to lose out on this. However, if they drop in behind you, then you're on the inside. They can take this corner with the proper angle. You're the one who's going to be losing speed as you head towards the apex. You're going to have to bleed off a ton more speed. Now, it's still tricky because if they follow in behind you, they're going to have to give you enough space that they're not hitting you. With because what they're going to want to do, since you took this so narrow, you're going to be coming wide early as you try to get on the speed. It, then they can cross over to the inside of you and go past you. This is also a good place where people are going to make a lot of mistakes. Just shoot right past them if you take it carefully. So, into the final corner, another corner, like every almost every corner in this track, where it's almost impossible to get a distinct advantage coming out of the corner. So if you're heading into this corner side by side, or you get enough to be on the inside that they have to give you space, Chances are, if they or if they defend, if they defend, going outside is probably a good thing here. Remember what I said about taking that corner at the proper angle, right? Well, you can kind of come in on the outside, and even though you can't aim to the apex, you can stay beside them, and they're going to bleed a ton of speed on the inside. Kind of come in on the outside and hold your angle. I could defended this on the inside and against good racers, they can get through the corner faster than I can. Because when I normally as I'm getting on the throttle here, remember I said on the lap guide section of the lap, I, I'm squirming, right? The car is squirming. So it's make it if I'm side by side, now I'm having to hold off on the gas instead of aiming out towards the wall, I'm aiming out until I'm almost down the straight to keep the center line as the person on the outside, they, they're going to have much greater exit speed. The danger here is, is if you're on the outside, don't get enough speed, you're going to be side by side all the way to turn. So if you get enough speed, you want to get out ahead of the person and claim the ideal racing line. Because if you go side by side all the way towards turn one, as I was talking at the beginning of this lap, so the actually the advantageous place to be going going up the hill but you've got a drag race all the way to turn one and a slot in in front so that's a quick lap guide and, and talking about where the good passing opportunity track i hope this helps you in the uh, week four to sonoma um I know a lot of guys struggle with this track and it'd be awesome to see everyone you know, doing a 129 hit the high 128s that's possible with this oh i agree guys are really fast i'm sure a lot of you would have figured this all, all this out on your own but since this is one i kind of got a head start on thought it might be useful for you so hope that helps you out um have a good day and, and if you're not an slr doing our gt3 series this lap guide should still be helpful for you i think you I, most cars there's slight adjustments you make but the lines are pretty so, have a good day.